guys and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm sharing with you all a chicken and seafood gumbo this is my version this is just my take on this classic recipe so if you'd like to see how to make this keep watching So guys, to start this recipe, I'm adding in my andouille sausage and I'm adding in some chorizo sausage. Now chorizo is not, um, it's not something that they usually put in gumbo, but my husband loves chorizo sausage in this when I make it, so hence the reason why I put in some of that for him. So what we're going to do now is let this render out, let it get brown, and then we'll move on to the next step. Just give it a turn, make sure it's browning evenly on all sides. Okay, when your sausages are brown, go ahead and remove them from your pot. Leave, try to get the, the fats from the sausages to remain in the pot. And we're going to set this aside. Now, once you remove that, I'm going to go into my pot with some garlic infused coconut oil from CG Limited. And this is available in Trinidad and it's also available online on Amazon. My house is really cold, so hence the reason why it's uh, that consistency. And I'm also going to go in with some butter. Don't worry about the brown bits on the bottom of the pot, guys. That's just going to add more flavor to this recipe. So what we're going to be doing now is creating a roux. And the roux is really important when making a gumbo. And a dark roux is what they would usually go for. So what I'm going to do now is to the butter and garlic coconut oil mixture, I'm going to go in with my flour. And you want your heat to be on a low for this. You want the flour to take its time. And we're going to cook that flour until we have a really dark roux. So I'm gonna be cooking this down for about, say, 10, 15 minutes until it's nice and dark brown in color. You want it to take its time, low and slow. You don't wanna rush the browning process. If you rush it, your flour can taste burnt. Okay guys, my roux is getting really nice and dark. Some people like a dark, dark, dark roux and they stick by tradition. Some people like it on a lighter side. So cook the roux to the color that you would like it. Okay guys, that's the color that I'm going for. Now I'm going to go in and add some chopped onions. In goes some chopped celery, chopped bell peppers, I'm adding in some chopped pimento peppers for flavor and I'm going to start giving this a mix and we're going to be cooking this down in the roux until the vegetables are tender. The roux is going to continue to brown and get darker in color as the vegetables cook. When your vegetables are halfway cooked, add in some minced garlic and allow that to cook and soften. Okay, after your veggies or your trinity is nice and tender, you can either go in here with a beer, but because the baby has to eat, I'm going to opt out for the beer and I'm adding in some fish stock. I did add some fish, Maggi fish seasoning to the stock so that I can add more flavor in this. But it's totally optional. You can just use plain fish stock. Set the extra aside and we're just going to mix this and start to bring up all of the bits from the bottom of the pot. And you will see how that sauce is going to start to thicken. You see that consistency? That nice thick consistency from the roux. Now, I know some of you all may say this roux is not dark enough for you, but I'll keep saying as I'm going along with this recipe, please cook the roux to the color you would like. So if you want it really, really dark, of course, cook it really, really dark. Now I'm gonna go in with the rest of that stock. And I'm gonna give this a mix. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding some more flavors. In goes some bay leaves, and these are called bay laurel leaves. They're the American bay leaves. 
I'm going in with some Worcestershire sauce. I have some Sloppy Mama seasoning and I have some Zatarans Creole seasoning. So it's a Cajun Sloppy Mama and a Zatarans Creole seasoning that goes in. Feel free to use whatever Cajun or Creole seasoning you have on hand, guys. In goes the sausage. Now I'm adding in some chicken to this. You don't have to add chicken if you don't want to. It's totally optional. I'm going in with some tomatoes chopped. I don't want to add too much of the tomato, so just half of the tin. If you wanted more of the tomato flavor, feel free to add more. The last ingredient that goes in here now is some okra, as they call it, but we call it okra. So you can use frozen or you can use fresh. Depends on what you want. It doesn't matter. But you also want to make sure that it's cooked properly because sometimes okra can take a while to cook. So all we're waiting now is for this to come up to a simmer. And we're going to allow it to cook for about five minutes once it comes up to a simmer because we want to make sure that that okra is cooked before we put in our seafood. Once the seafood goes in, it's not going to have very long to cook before it's done. Okay, now that this has come up to a simmer, it's time to add in our seafood. And I'm going in with shrimp and crab claws. Feel free to add lobster or any other type of seafood you like. Clams, mussels, whatever you like. It doesn't have to be the lobster. Um, the meat doesn't have to be in the lobster shell or the crab claw. You can take it out if you think that would be easier for you to enjoy. So we're gonna cook this. It should take about five minutes. The shrimp is pretty big. So five minutes and then this would be done the crab is pre-cooked so all we're doing is just heating it through if you're if you were using um fresh crab that's not cooked you would put in the crab a couple minutes before you put in the shrimp shrimp would take a shorter period of time to cook than the crab would okay guys to finish this i'm going in with some fresh chopped parsley and scallions or saif as we say in trinidad and just give that a mix the shrimp looks like it just needs one more minute and then this would be finished what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and taste it for salt okay good it's perfect wow guys you wouldn't believe how delicious this tastes it tastes really really delicious perfect balance of flavors of course feel free to add more cajun seasoning if you want to but this is finished all we have to do now is go ahead and serve the shrimp is finished and it's perfectly cooked everything is perfectly cooked make sure and take out the bay leaves when you're serving this so all we have to do now is pour ourselves a bowl and enjoy so guys here you have it my recipe for chicken and seafood gumbo i hope you all enjoy today's recipe this is one of our favorites usually it's served with white rice but we like to eat it as is so feel free to serve it with some white rice if you like or have it by itself if you guys enjoyed this recipe please remember to comment down below let me know if you try it and what you think thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video Bye everyone.